struck gold in early September, beating Dundee United 4-3. Well, that's a great goal. McWilliams, 1-0. Nine minutes gone. McKinley, there's a great goal. Oh, yes. Two up. That's a big Henderson. Paris, 3-2. There's Brown with a header. 4-3. Oh. The key to Dundee's revival had been sparked in midfield, where the speedy Rafferty complemented Connor's craft, and the tackling and surging runs of Brown made him a constant threat. Brown went on to make his mark in the Scottish Cup, and he continued his scoring form in the league. That summer, the team was further strengthened by the arrival of Morton sweeper Jim Duffy for £57,500, and his influence was soon in evidence. I was persuaded to, to go to Dens Park in 1985, driven by Archie Knox. Um, I met him in a hotel in Glasgow. Um, he impressed me a lot. He had a great enthusiasm for the game. And uh, I said, although uh, I'd spoken to him previously, um, they were still trying to thrash out a transfer deal with Morton and uh, Archie got in uh, the back door a little bit, I think, spoke to Hal Stewart, concluded the, the transfer fee, and uh, I was delighted to move up to Dundee. It was, uh, it was, uh, I thought it would be a good career move, and it turned out that way. Although Archie Knox had made a tremendous impact at Dens, in June 1986 he resigned due to continuing financial constraints, and assistant manager Jockey Scott took charge. Jockey just kept it going, really. He just wanted to follow in Archie's footsteps after he left. And Jockey has a great knowledge of the game. Everybody respected him. And he played his part. Spiralling debts were at the root of Dundee's and Jockey Scott's problems. And soon a recently capped Robert Connor and last season's top scorer Ray Stephen were transferred. But two astute Jockey Scott signings were to turn things around. Keith Wright of Wraith Rovers and Dundee United's Tommy Coyne were signed for around a quarter of the sum raised from the sale of Connor and Stephen and soon they formed a highly successful striking partnership. Rafferty still gets a chance and they put it away. Pretty sale by Coyne. John Brown. Oh, that's another one. This time it's Keith Wright. This helped the club to the Scottish Cup semi-finals. The 3-2 game at, um, at Tynecastle was Probably, I think, the most disappointing game for me um, as captain of the club um, because we were playing very well at the time. It's probably one of the few games at that particular era where we were, I think we, we maybe went into the game slight favourites because we were playing so well. And uh, I think we were 2 1 up, I think, at half time. But I think we'd, we had never been in that situation for quite a while. A lot of the players came from first division clubs and maybe I lacked a little bit of experience at that uh, particular stage of the competition. And at half-time, I think maybe a lot of us were thinking about the final. And uh, we get caught in that dilemma, which is, do we sit on the lead uh, and protect it, or do we go and try and push on? But um, I think we played very, very well over the whole 90 minutes, but we made crucial errors um, at the wrong time and were punished. And eventually, as I said, we get caught, I think, with just that indecision of maybe just trying to hold on to what we had, whereas in the first half we dominated the game. So we might have been better just going for it, but you learn through experience, and uh, as I said, people from, from that team, they went on and, uh, and done very well. As I said, we mentioned John Brown getting several championships with Rangers, Tommy Coyne, Keith Wright, and uh, boys like that went on again and done very well. So I think that uh, we all learned from it, um, but it was a, a very painful lesson. Dundee had been unfortunate to lose but they made a great start to the 87-88 season before Jim Duffy's career seemed ended by a cruciate ligament injury against Rangers. Without their influential skipper, the Dark Blues struggled before the arrival of the experienced Gordon Chisholm sparked a recovery. United delighted to shift it in, that's a goal! Coyne does it again! Now, oh, this is what caused and the United Ballers in that first half, Wright has done very, very well. There's a lovely cutback. Surely he must put it away. He has. Coin. Angus, that's a very good looking ball. Rafferty. Might get his shot and he does and it's a post. There's a chance, it's in. Wright, 3-1. 
January 1988 was to herald a major slump in Dundee's fortunes, with high-scoring midfielder John Brown's £350,000 transfer to Rangers. Their only consolation being a tenant six's success. Trying to play it beyond Duncan, and Tommy Coyne succeeds. It's Dundee's third, and now it looks as though the tenant sixes will go to Tayside. By then, Ian Gellatley's controlling interest had been bought by Angus Cook, and when Jockey Scott was allowed to move on to Aberdeen, Dave Smith was handed the manager's job at the start of the 1988-89 season. I think Dave went wrong because he came up from English football, and he was here on match days when you seen him. He was maybe here a couple of days during the week, but he, that's the only time you seen him. He never got involved as much as I thought he should have been with the players. Hence, the reason he, I don't think he got the respect that he should have. And then I think, hence the reason that we didn't do that well under Dave. Despite the unrest, there was a notable double over reigning champion Celtic. Saunders. It's Wright. Deceiving Lex Bailey. Great run here by Wright and Coy. The previous season, 33-goal Tommy Coyne had finished fifth in the race for the Adidas Golden Boot, a trophy awarded to Europe's top league marksman. Tommy Coyne scores his 36th goal of the season to make it 2 all. Smith's was to prove an ill-judged appointment. The colourful Dundonian had spent his entire football career south of the border, and players and fans alike were unhappy with his unattractive long ball tactics. By January 1989, a succession of poor results left morale at rock bottom, and it was little surprise when he resigned after just seven months in charge, to be replaced by 1973 League Cup final hero Gordon Wallace. Well, when I was offered the Dundee manager's job, uh, I honestly knew it was a big challenge. Uh, coming from across the road, uh, I knew what was what coming into. But I thought Dundee had potential. They had Keith Wright and Tommy Coyne, and uh, obviously, they had a couple of good strikers, but unknown to me, the Tommy Coyne deal had all been done and dusted, and he was away at Celtic within me being here about three weeks. So it kind of upset the apple cart slightly. As well as Coyne, other players such as Tosh McKinley, Connor, Stephen and Brown had departed. Their replacements were not of the same standard, and in 1990, the Dark Blues were relegated. The next season, really, we lacked a leader. Uh, in, the middle, in the middle of defence or in the middle of the park, somebody that could get a grip. And it was only when Jim Duffy came back at the end that we put any consistency in the season. And had we had a player of Jim Duffy's calibre or somebody similar, we could have done a lot better. But uh, it was always disappointing to get relegated. A series of encouraging results brought fresh hope. But despite a late derby win, the Dens Park revival had come too late. And look at this. Look, oh, dear, dear. Here's a great chance. That's equaliser. Yes. Right. Well, all credit to him for scoring that, but really, that was hurricane assisted. Billy Dodds made a big impression alongside Keith Wright, but Dundee narrowly failed to secure promotion in 1991 although there was the consolation of an exciting B&Q Centenary Cup final win over Air United. Dundee's failure to gain promotion and strong opposition to controversial proposals by Angus Cook to amalgamate with city rivals United meant a nervous start to the 91-92 season. Soon Canadian entrepreneur Ron Dixon was at the helm and despite various off-park financial uncertainties and management changes, the Dark Blues managed to achieve promotion to the Premier League with a 3-1 win over Forfar. Richie, Gallagher now in the clear. This could tie it up for Dundee. That's brilliantly finished by Gallagher. There's no doubt now about the outcome. It really was top-class finishing by Gallagher. And the pressure once again is off. Seven thousand home fans were happy to acclaim Dundee as first division champions in the final game against Montrose, although the game had ended in an embarrassing defeat. 
Simon Stainrod, by now interim manager, was to be confirmed as team boss. And a major overhaul meant there were several new faces by the start of the 92-93 Premier League campaign. In August, great encouragement was taken from a famous victory over Rangers. with the corner and Maxwell's punch out still leaves a problem on and Gilzean has scored for Dundee Dini playing it in looking for Gilzean helps it on there for Dodds absolutely magnificent three goals apiece and it's Dodds against Maxwell 3 to Dundee. Oh, what an incredible match this is. Never far from the dreaded relegation zone. In the last third of the season, the right blend was found. Premier safety being secured with a 3-1 win over Hibs at Dens. It was a tremendous atmosphere about the club. Everyone pulled together um, from and the cleaning staff to the office staff to the directors, the players, all going very, very well. Um, all worked really hard for each other. And, uh, you know, I think it was a great place to work. It was a great atmosphere. We could attract players to the club because of the atmosphere. Because they would, through word of mouth, they would talk to other players. And players would say, this is a great place to work. So I don't think there was any, any negativity about the club. It was just a simple fact that we didn't have a lot of money to buy players. But certainly that didn't stop, I think, the quality. I think when we had Neil McCann on one side, Paul Tosh on the other, Martin Vegas in midfield, George Shaw and Jerry Britton up front, scoring goals. We were an entertaining side. By early 1994, it was clear the club was bound for the first division. And Ron Dixon, having already spent one and a half million pounds on players, made it clear he would be making no further investment. The circumstances dictated that we needed four or five players at that time. And as I mentioned earlier on, we had no finance, uh, no overdraft, so we had to raise the money. From Billy Dodge's sale, we had four players brought in, plus we still had some money left over um, for other things than helping run the club. And that, as I said, what we had to do. There was no point in having Billy, who was a top-class player on his own and didn't have enough good players around him to help him. So we had to supplement that by selling Billy and bringing other players in. On a more positive note, 19-year-old Neil McCann had emerged as an old-fashioned winger of electrifying pace, with the ability to beat defenders and deliver telling crosses into the goal mouth. Back in the first division, it was hoped that Dundee would make a quick return to the Premier League. But although always likely to score themselves, they were just as likely to lose them at the other end, as here against Dunfermline. Along with the Pars, League Cup winners Wraith Rovers were their main promotion rivals. But Dundee were too often unable to win the games that mattered. And in the end, they narrowly missed out on promotion and a playoff place. By November 95, Dundee had progressed to the final stages of the Coca-Cola League Cup and lay just off the top of the league. The, the next season we had a, a fabulous cup run, which ultimately took us to the, the Coca-Cola Cup final against Aberdeen. And we beat Kilmarnock. Uh, we then went into the quarterfinals and played Hearts at uh, Dens Park and that was a, an unbelievable game. Um, I think we were 2-0 um, up, I think we went 2-2, 3-2 up, 3-3, 4-3 three, three, four, three up, we went to 4-4 and uh, eventually went to penalties. That shootout was as dramatic as the rest of the night. 4-4 and four, four spot kicks, Willie Jimison hit the post. And that left Bykhorst with this to put Dundee into the semi-finals. Mission accomplished, but breathtaking entertainment all the way, with Hearts making a major contribution. And Dundee's fans quail in the mood for celebration. The semi-final was, a, a, for me personally, was the most important occasion in the whole time I was at Dundee Football Club. Um, because... Leading up to the game, um, we were in deep trouble. Um, the directors had came to me uh, during the week, which is not the ideal preparation to uh, a cup semi-final, and basically told us that we had to win. 
we had to win because we had to get to the final.